Hello there, I'm Rhino GT4, and welcome to Let's Play World Rally Championship for the PlayStation 2. Developed by Evolution Studios, published in North America by BAM Entertainment, released in 2002 here in North America, it is the official licensed uh, game of the World Rally Championship of the 2001 Championship. And technically, this is not the beginning of the LP. This is technically part 15 of this. Because I've already done a full championship of this on my friend Thunder's channel, HG Central, which you should check out. Because this is going to be a continuation of that playthrough. So, on Thunder's channel, I went through all the details of the game here. And if you want to see that, watch the part one there. And uh, I did a full World Rally Championship. Welcome to one of the most demanding and challenging motorsport competitions on the planet, the World Rally Championship. Take some of the best drivers in the world, add some of the most incredible cars, and mix in some tarmac, gravel and ice. To get about first across the line, the race in the WRCs against the toughest rival of all, time. Each rally is broken into stages with points for the fastest times taken to complete the overall event. The cars themselves carry the names of some familiar family motors. But under the skin, they're purpose-built rally machines with four-wheel drive, turbos galore and horsepower counted in the hundreds. They'll need it too with conditions across the championship ranging from sub-zero Scandinavian forests to the overpowering heat and dust of Kenya and Greece. With the World Rally Championship, it's not just a question of winning, but surviving. Kind of forgot about that intro video. Anyways, so uh, yeah, we're going to be doing the World Rally Championship. Now on HD Central, I did this on the normal difficulty because I had to do it on the normal difficulty to unlock the hardest difficulty, and that is professional, which is what I'm going to be doing for uh, this stage of the LP or this half of the LP on my channel. So let us do the professional World Rally Championship now over. On HG, uh, I did. I drove. Well, we have our choices of cars here. Let's go through that first. We have the Ford Focus WRC, the Subaru Impreza, the Mitsubishi Lancer, Hyundai Accent, the Skoda Octavia, and the Citroen Xara, uh, and the Peugeot 206. So I used the Peugeot. I drove as Marcus Grunholm on HG, and uh, well, I won almost every rally, almost. But um. There is a uh, manufacturer's uh, point standing in this game, and um, there's only one manufacturer out of these seven that did not score any points in the last, on the uh, HG season, I guess, and that was Citroen. So uh, I'm going to give Citroen a little redemption here. I'm going to drive a Citroen. Now we can choose as any of the three drivers that actually drove for Citroen in 2001 WRC. We have uh, Felipe Bugalski. Jesus Peraz and Thomas Radstrom, and I think I'm gonna drive as Radstrom just because. Just because. Yeah. There are few rallies more prestigious or glamorous than Monte Carlo, and this is where the World Rally Championship begins. It starts in Monaco, then heads up onto Alpine Roads further north before dropping back down into the Principality. It's run entirely on tarmac, but snow and ice always make for a few surprises. The oldest event in the WRC calendar is the one the top teams really want to win. So we're starting our championship with one of the most prestigious rallies in the world, and that is the Rally Automobile in Monte Carlo. Each rally is going to be five stages, and uh, well, I'll get into more details as I start driving. But for our first stage, we it's going to be 4.5 kilometers. You should note that stages for this difficulty are the same as in normal difficulty on the HG, so nothing different in stage, just the difficulty of the rallies, hopefully. Anyways, here's our uh, default, here's our car setup screen, which we have a default setup, which the game has for each rally. So, uh, basically a recommendation. I'm not going to change any of that, because fuck that. And finally, we can start the stage, or we can do a shakedown stage, since we're at the start of the rally. 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the shakedown just to show off the different camera angles in case you're just watching this and you're not watching this from HD, which you should be watching from HD. And to make it a little easy for you, well, I conveniently have everything in order in a wonderful playlist on my channel. All you have to do is find it, and it's very easy to find. Either it's, you know, it's going to be, like, in the lower part of my Let's Plays racing uh, uh, section of my playlists, because alphabetical order. But here, here we go. Here's our, oh, one thing I need to change immediately is that. Automatic gears to main gears. So, here's the shakedown stage. We don't get any pace notes, and it's just we drive around, get a feel for the stage, see how the conditions are and stuff. But here are our camera angles. We have this interesting uh, center interior camera, which is really interesting and unique. We have a uh, first person camera, bonnet view, bumper view and third person view. I'm going to be alternating between third person and this camera for first person throughout this LP. I'm going to be re uh, changing every rally and I'm going to be doing it in opposite rotation as I did on HG. So, since I use the uh, chase cam and the HG uh, Monica rally, I'm going to be using first person here and etc etc. So, uh, uh, for those who did watch the HG ver part of this LP, um, you may remember that I mentioned something about each car having a different tack. Well, once we get started, to, well, as you notice there, uh, my Citroen here has a red digital tack with uh, a slightly different design compared to the Peugeot I drove on HG, which had a black with a green shadow digital tack. And some cars, each car has their own, like, tack HUD. Some are digital, some are analog. And, uh, at the end of this LP, I will be showing off all the different tacks and cars, because I'll be doing a bonus video showing off a bunch of, uh, extra content that we, I will hopefully unlock through this championship. So, here we go. Let's begin our first actual stage of... The Professional World Rally Championship and off to a lazy start, as I do. I'm really bad at getting off the line because there's like a little bit of a de delay between like the countdown hitting zero and when you can actually upshift into first gear. And I always like upshift. I, I always miss that delay. I always upshift a little too soon. Not off to a good start here. Although leading at the first sector split, so that's, I guess that works, but, um, yeah, anyways, you see the HUD of this thing, it's all red, it's all red, and the digital gauge is actually a slightly different design compared to the uh, Citroen, so, uh, for those who are just now starting to watch this, uh, about the physics of this game, it's pretty arcadey, cars slide around a lot, and it's very forgiving in terms of, uh, being able to control your car, so it's definitely no simulator, you know, it's no Richard Burns rally or anything like that, and it's a nice little fun game. Of course, this is the first uh, in the uh, series of officially licensed WRC games. There's actually been two different series of these games. Of course, the second series is still ongoing to this day, and uh, yeah. So, second, or third sector split, excuse me, not very good, got a red split, and I'm not leading the stage anymore, oh no. Yeah, this is going to be interesting to see how well I do with this championship, considering it's, well, supposed to be harder, considering, and, uh, I'm bad. It, it doesn't help that, like, because I'm constantly speaking, I'm speaking over the pace notes, so I can't actually hear them which uh, sucks, but luckily I do have a convenient map over to my top left, and wow, I ended up fourth in that stage overall, or at the end. Just kept losing time. Huh. Anyways, after each stage, we get a replay, which I'm not going to uh, show, but I am going, at the uh, end of each first stage, I am going to save the replays of the first stage so I can, you know, grab my epic video thumbnail. 
Because it'll be epic. I don't know. It won't be epic. It'll just be a thumbnail. So, let's just overwrite that. Sure, name the file one, just so I'm, you know, know what the hell I'm doing. Because I get confused very easily. Anyways, here is our results of the first stage. Carlos Sainz wins stage number one. Second place is Tommy Mackinnon in Mitsubishi. Third, we have Ford Driver, which is actually Colin McRae in third place. I'll get into him as I go through stage two. Then I end up in fourth place, five seconds behind Sainz. Armin Schwartz in the first Skoda finishes fifth. And Francois Delacour in the third Ford finishes sixth. And here are the rest of the stage one results. Richard Burns in the top Subaru in ninth. Hari Rovenpera in the top uh, Pojo in tenth. And Alistair McRae in the top Hyundai in 16th. I like how all these manufacturers are pretty much grouped together. It's interesting. And then there's the uh, overall standings, which, since we've only done one stage, it's the same as... Yeah. Just, it, it, yeah, it's the same. So anyways, it's time for stage number two. It's going to be 5.2 kilometers. Once again, dry, very twisty. And uh, let's go. So here we go. Stage two is loaded. So about the whole Colin McRae Ford driver thing... Three. Um, well, considering Codemasters has the rights to the Colin McRae name, they, they actually couldn't use his likeness in this game, so, uh, they just went with naming him Ford Driver, but it's, it's Colin McRae, and I'll refer to him as Colin McRae throughout this LP. Um, it still has the name of his co-driver, though, Nicky Griss, Winkin, so, uh, there's that. It just, you know. Codematch is like, hey, we, we have the rights to this name. No, you can't. So, uh, yeah. Ooh. Not a very good start to this stage either. Already fallen two seconds back. So, uh, there's that. Um, as far as explaining things, I think I've gone into pretty much everything. If you want, like, maybe if I've missed something here, you know, you should watch the HG playthrough, or the HG half of this. Because, yeah, for the complete WRC Let's Play. Because, you know, I did this as a cross-promotion with Thunder's channel, because I've been wanting to contribute to uh, content to HG Central for a while now, and this is pretty much the perfect case since, um, like I said, uh, professional difficulty was locked from the start, and uh, the fact that these, uh, you know, it's the same five stages and the same, like, yeah, same everything. The only thing that changes is, like, you know, the pace of your opponents through championship, through difficulties. Figured this would be a perfect opportunity to do a little cross promotion thing with HG and also contribute content to HG Central. Thunder is a cool lad, and, you know, I've done collabs with him before, like the whole uh, test drive, even destruction LP, way in the early, very early days of HG Central which was a lot of fun. Hopefully one day I'll actually LP that game myself, but yeah. If you want to hear me at least talk about that game, while seeing gameplay of that game simultaneously, there's that at least you can check out. And I've been in some other things, like, uh... I've been in group commentary for his... I think his, I think it was for his Grand Tourism 1 LP. I've shown up to his couple of his streams, and... I've been featured on his highlight reel videos a few times, and, you know, all that jazz. Anyways, I finished stage two while talking all about that, talking about all that shit, and I ended up winning this stage, actually, which is nice, so awesome. Good recovery from stage one, so we get our auto save here. And let's check out our stage results. I ended up taking the win by 1.67 seconds over Mackinnon, Carlos Sainz third. Richard Burns up to fourth in the Subaru, or finished the stage in fourth. Then Colin McRae and Harry Rogan Para. And here is the rest of the stage results for second Monte Carlo stage. My Citroen teammates not doing too well. That's about as well as they did on the HG championship, so, you know. Anyways, I move up to third overall in the rally, just 1.6 seconds behind Mackinnon now, and about half a second behind Carlos Sainz in second, so that's cool. And I'm 10 seconds ahead of Colin McRae now, so that's even cooler. And Richard Burns moves up from 9th to 5th in the rally. Good for him. 
So, let's move on to day two and stage number three. We're gonna have uh, some snow falling in the stage and it's gonna be 3.3 kilometers. Relatively simple looking stage, so let's go. All right, here we go, time for stage three. Got a light snowfall here, not too bad. And away we go. On the third stage here at Monte Carlo. So, uh, shit, what was I going to talk about? There's something I was going to talk about in this stage, but I don't remember what now. Fuck. Dang it. Poopy. Shit. I don't know. It'll probably come to me. Eventually, maybe. Well, it's been a very easy first two sectors. Yeah. Stage looked pretty simple from the map, and, well, it is. Except this section here. Nice and smooth. At least try to be smooth, not doing a good job of being smooth. Oh, jeez. Almost whacking the wall. Don't mind me. Don't mind me at all. Ways. Pretty tight race here for the uh, stage win with whoever is currently leading the stage. And at top speed to the line. And Carlos Sainz is going to win the stage. All right. Did gain time on Mackinac, though. Very little, but I gained time nonetheless. So there's that. So, uh, still, you know, not liking my chances of actually winning this rally, but it's whatever. My ultimate goal with this is to win the championship. Uh, there's a thing you can unlock from each rally that you win, but there's also cheat codes <laughs> for the same thing. So, you know. Anyways, there's the stage three results. I take second by 1.66 seconds behind Carlos Sainz. Here are the rest of the results. And with three stages complete, two to go, uh, Carlos Sainz takes the rally lead again, and I fall to 2.4 seconds behind him. So, yeah, at least I'm still on the podium. There's that. That's cool. But, um,. Anyways, there's the rest of the results. Petter Solberg is in last place. Well then. Poor Petter. Anyways, time for stage four. It's going to be much more technical and longer. 6.5 kilometers, still snowing, and let's go. Okay, time for stage four, and I think I remember the thing I was going to talk about in the Three, last stage. So, two, one, go. get going here. There we go. Good upshift off the line. But, uh, yeah, so, um... I mentioned how this is like a, ser a two series of WRC games. Well, it is true, unless you live in North America, because um, when it comes to this first uh, WRC series developed by Evolution Studios, this is the only game that was released in North America. The, the, the only one. All the other WRC games were, uh, yeah, exclusively released in Europe. Well, Evolution developed. WRC games. I don't know why. Why it's like it's the same thing with like the uh, the F1, the Formula One games at this time. They're just not released over or not brought over to North America for some reason. I guess uh, because us filthy, dirty Americans and uh, by association Canadians as well, even though they're not filthy or dirty. Uh don't think, uh, you know, Formula One or World Rally is cool enough or something. I don't fucking know. Ultimately sucks, but it's okay, because I have a way of playing all the uh, sequels to this game, which I intend to do. Spoiler alert. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Let's see if I can gain any time on Science and or Mackinac this stage. These long straight sections aren't helping me because my car is set up with uh, short gears. So, uh, yeah. These long straights are not helping at all. I could change the setup, but I'm too lazy and stupid. I don't want to ruin the car, damn it. Even though I probably would actually make it better by having longer gears, but still. 
in most cases, but still, it's whatever. We're doing fine. We've got two second lead in the stage, actually, which is good enough to give me the lead if uh, I can hold on to this gap. Which is nice. It's really nice. Um, I guess one more thing I should mention as far as, like, driving assists, I don't think there's really anything in terms of driving assists, like, that you can actually turn on and off. Um, except for uh, the transmission, you have automatic, semi-auto, and manual options, which I'm using manual because, you know, I'm hardcore like that. So, yeah. There's that. And we're in the final sector here of stage number four. So, moving on. Now I'm here pinned. And we've got the advertising rails, which means we're at the end and across the line, and Carlos Sainz beat me. Damn. But I did beat Mackinnon, so I think I actually have moved up into second in this rally. Hopefully. That would be nice. So, uh, let's see. First we get our autosave, and then we get to check out our results of the rally. Or, the stage, excuse me. Eh, Science beat me by almost a second, it's fine. But I beat Mackinnon by almost two seconds, so that'll help out a lot. Like I said, I think that moves me up to second in the rally. There's the rest of the stage results. And, indeed, with one stage remaining, I move up to second place. Only three tenths up on Mackinnon, but three seconds behind Carlos Sainz, so I don't think I'm going to be beating him uh, in this rally. I think Sainz is going to be taking the victory in this uh, first round. So, I guess I'm just going to have to uh, do my best to uh, catch him through the rest of the championship. But anyway, it's time for our final stage. It's going to be seven kilometers, and it's going to be long and twisty, and let's fucking go. Alright, here we go. Final stage, day three. Stage five. Let's do this. Let's try to uh, at least bring home second. I think a up uh, A podium is pretty much guaranteed, co considering the gap between third and fourth. So, that I don't have to worry about, but... Try to uh, start off with as many points as I can here. Holy shit, big downhill hairpin. Holy crap. Forgot about that. Another big downhill hairpin. Because why the hell not? Massive uh, elevation change here. Pretty sure these stages are the same. I might have to uh, double check that. Because holy damn. These some crazy ass hairpins. Jesus. Alrighty. Well then. Well, what an insane start to this stage. Hopefully, uh, things calm down a little bit. Maybe. Probably won't. In fact, I doubt they will. No, that's fine. It's fine. Just gotta keep going and going and going and hopefully winning. Especially hopefully winning and... Dude, that was a very good second sector. Holy shit. Whoops. Hey, brakes are a thing. I should probably use those. A very long hairpin. Not very good at, uh, like, being in the correct gear at any moment in time in this game. If you use automatic transmission, uh, yeah, the game, like, goes through the gears all over the place, like, especially when you're turning, it'll just go, like, 6, 4, 6, 5, 4, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, go. Like, it goes through the gears so quickly and so often. It's actually kind of ridiculous. So if, you know, you're not like a hardcore stupid idiot like me, uh, I, I kind of would recommend using on that transmission in this game. Just because probably not losing any pace by not using manual. In fact, using automatic might be beneficial, just so, uh, you know. 
the, in, uh, the engine doesn't bog down because it's like, oh hey, I'm, you know, this is it. I'm in the wrong gear. I'm in too high of a gear suddenly. Whoa. Oh shit. Anyways, moving on onto the final sector of this rally. It's gonna be neck and neck to see to uh, see who wins. Gonna need a good final sector here. Hopefully, can pick up the win. Kind of pushing here, so I can hope to win. Whoop. Another hairpin, right? To the finish line, and I lost time in that final sector, and it looks like it's not going to be enough to win the rally. Damn. Because <sighs> uh, I was, came in three seconds behind Carlos Sainz and ended up, uh, yeah, not um, beating him in this stage by three seconds. One stage by 2.59 over Sainz. Smacking in third, Schwartz fourth. McCray fifth, Freddy Lurks sixth in the Mitsubishi. Lots of shuffling throughout this rally for most people. And there we go, there's your final results of the Monaco rally. I finished second behind Color Signs just by three quarters of a second, so it was pretty close. So Signs gets a maximum of ten points, I get six points for second. Tommy McInnen finishes third and gets four points. Colin McCray takes home fourth, getting three points. Armin Schwartz gets two points in fifth. And Freddy Loix gets one point for sixth place. And then everyone else gets nothing. No points. Only the top six score points here, so. Yeah. But there's the rest of the results regardless. And here are the driver standings after one round. It's the same as our finishing order at Monaco because, you know, one round. So, yeah, there is that. So I take the early second place. Hopefully I can, uh, you know, actually win this championship because that would be nice. And finally, here are our manufacturer standings. So, I've already scored six, po six more points for Citroen than they scored in the entirety of the uh, HG season. Although one of the drivers actually did score three points, but they didn't get any team points. I don't know how team points are cap or manufacturer points are calculated in this game. It it's weird. Like Mitsubishi has six points as well. I, I don't fucking know. I, I don't know how it works, but. Anyways, Ford gets 10, Mitsubishi and Citroen tied for second for, with 6, Skoda gets 3 points on the board in 4th, and Subaru gets 1 point, Pojo and Hyundai, nothing. So, there's the first round of the Professional World Rally Championship. So with that, stay tuned for round number 2, and hopefully uh, I'll actually win that rally. <laughs>